Okay, so we just introduced the, the 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 finite volume approach, and we saw that it was fairly fair, fairly similar. Now, what I want to do is is actually go back to the finite difference approach. And if you're following along in the books, this is where chapter 30 starts. So, um, the finite difference approach, going back to this now for parabolic equations. So previously, uh, we did it for elliptic equations. Now we want to do it for parabolic uh, partial differential equations. And we're going to see that some, some very different issues creep in. Uh, but before we get going, let's give the physical background. Uh, the, I mean, and, and we, could, we could have any example, but this is the example uh, that we use. And so here, let me draw the other border right away. So let's say we have two boundaries. And we have a rod that runs between those two boundaries. So here's our rod. And it's a thin rod, so why is it thin? Why does that matter? Well, it matters because we can assume that the the temperature anywhere along the cross uh, cross section is is thin, and and everywhere around its sides, we can have no convection, no conduction, uh, nothing like that. There's no heat transfer coming coming out here. No heat transfer. Only only along the rod. Okay. So that's the idea. This is actually very similar to the problem that we saw uh, in, the, in the previous unit where we solved uh, partial differential equations. But uh, the difference here is that we're going to look at change over time. So before uh, we had some solution uh, to, this, uh, to this differential equation and the solution looked something like this. So let me say, so let's say and I'm trying to draw this to match up with there. So let's say this is temperature, um, and this is the length, and here. And so we have the temperature, and maybe maybe the temperature is going to decrease uh, with the length. And well, depending on, I mean, if it's heated at both ends, maybe it's going to go down uh, and then back up or something. And let's say. Um, that the temperature over here is something like, oh, I don't know, 80 degrees, and this temperature over here uh, is something like 50 degrees. And so uh, this is 80, and this is 50. Then at one point in time, we might solve it, and it may look something like this. But if we solve it at a different point in time, we may get a solution. I'll try to draw it as a dashed line. We may get a solution like this, okay? Well, let me get a solution like that. So um, the idea here then is that we're involving time uh, instead of instead of just space, and we can do this with two spatial um, with two spatial dimensions. And so this could be a plate that we're that we're going to look at the temperature flow across the plate and look at transients so look at how the the temperature changes over time instead of just steady state so the elliptic equation was just steady state um, everything steady state now we're going to look at the same problem uh, but we're going to look at the transients we're going to analyze the transients and so the equation uh, that we come up with and and I'm not going to derive uh, the equation again because I think I think there's limited uh, need for it. So, we, so, but the equation that we come up with, we need to look at because we should recognize um, that it is indeed a par parabolic equation. So, what we have is k uh, second partial of t second partial of t with respect to x, and so this is we're calling this the x dimension second partial of t with respect to x. Uh, is equal to the partial of temperature uh, with respect to time. Okay, so this is our this is our equation, and if you remember, um, this this part can go uh, into either well this 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 definitely this goes into the d term, and so then we have our a and our c. Remember when we're doing b squared minus four ac. Our a and c were the were the terms with the second partials on them, and you can see that we've only got one in here. So, so that's uh, that means the other one is zero. So this cancels out, makes it zero. Uh, so this is zero, and we know that b is zero. So that's this is equal to zero. It's a parabolic equation. Okay. Um, now, looking at the solution method here, we do the same thing as we done we've done before. So we say k 
okay, the second partial of t uh, with respect to x. We're just going to plug in the finite difference formula. So we're going to say t i um, minus 1 plus, actually, so that's what I get for trying to do it from memory. Whoops, come on, erase, 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 erase. Okay, so it's ti plus 1 minus 2 ti plus ti minus 1 all over, let's see, delta x squared. Now, the other thing that we want to do here, this is great, and this is exactly what we had before, but um, I shouldn't have called this L. This is going to be x. Okay, that's important. <laughs> because what we're going to do here is we're going to introduce something for the time. So we have t is already for temperature, and I don't want another t running around because that's going to confuse it. I mean, we already have this t here. So I'm going to put a superscript here for L. And I'm going to call it L. All right, so what, what are we doing here? Well, we have i. Um, i is for... Um, I is for for the spatial dimension. So the spatial index for the spatial dimension we're going to put on the bottom and then the index for the time dimension we're going to put on top. So L we're going to use for the time dimension and I and later J we're going to use for the spatial dimension. And so uh, that's that's just a notation uh, that we use here. Okay, so that is this part of that equation. Now we need to write out this other part of the equation. So writing out the other part of the equation we have dt dt is equal to t i and then we say l plus 1 minus t i at l all over delta t all right so this is so this was the centered this was the centered uh, divided difference finite divided difference Right, the second for the second derivative, and this is the forward finite divided difference. Okay, so then that gives us the the total equation k t i plus one l minus two t i l minus or plus t I minus one L all over move it down here a little bit all over uh, delta x squared is equal to uh, T I L plus one minus T I L all over delta T. All right, so that is that is the equation, and this is great. Um, but the thing is we want to solve it for this ti l plus 1 because we have presumably, so let's say we're given uh, the entire solution as an initial condition um, and well, maybe we might be able to get it from, from a, a derivative, um, but let's say we're given the entire, entire solution at, at time or, or leave it, we, we don't actually need it, we just need the initial condition at time i uh, and we're going to try to find the, the solution at time i plus 1. So t i plus 1 l, um, well, sorry, not i plus 1, but l plus 1. So we want to solve for this for t i l plus 1. And so when we do that, we get t i l plus 1 is equal to t i plus, that's t i at l, plus lambda times t i plus 1 l minus 2 t i l plus t i minus 1 l and the lambda that, that we just introduced is equal to k delta t over delta x squared. Now uh, it, it's interesting to just to just go look at this for a second. So like I said this is at 
time plus one, right? So this is the next time. So you should be thinking Euler's method, okay? What, remember Euler's method was I, yi plus one is equal to yi plus phi, uh, plus some slope uh, times a delta t. This should have a semicolon here. Plus some slope times a delta t. Well, look, we've got the delta t. Well, it was it was it was an h, but but our h here is a delta t. So if you look, this whole lambda phi actually it'll just be the k over delta x squared times all this stuff. That's an approximation for a slope. So this is time i right. So this should be our phi times our h. That's that's the idea that you should be getting here. So this is basically just Euler's method and we're solving it. This is um, a finite, so this is this is what you call, so just to ring your bell or remind you here, so this is the, this is an explicit method. Okay, why is this an explicit method? Well, just what I've shown here. Right. This is the explicit finite difference method. Why is it explicit? Because, uh, because our equation for t i plus one, our time plus one, just has our, our time before. So the same things apply that we said before about explicit and implicit. And uh, as we'll find out in a minute here, we'll, we'll talk about it. As we'll find out, we we run into problems. With uh, with the explicit methods, like just like we did when we solved first order ordinary different, we solved the ordinary differential equations. When we used the runge cut of methods, uh, we ran into pr uh, stability problems, uh, and we had to have really small step sizes to solve our stability problems. We're actually going to run into the same issue here, which is why the next thing we'll look at is implicit.